The Power Factor Show. Episode 98. You can find this podcast and others at Gun Rights Radio Network, gunrightsradio.com, podcasting freedom. Brought to you by Safariland and Hodgton, the gunpowder people. Welcome to Power Factor. I'm Larry. And I'm Rick. And this week we are going to talk about tracking your match performance. This should be very interesting. This is something so, that I'm totally unfamiliar with. This is something I've been doing uh, for a long time and I'm going to share it with uh, the viewers of the show. And Rick will have some questions along the way, I'm sure. Uh, first of all, we've got to, uh, a little business to take care of. Yes, we have the answer to the trivia question from the last episode. And drum roll, please. Who's our winner? Well, what was the question? Oh, what was the question? Who posed the question? Steve posed the question, and I think the question was, what is the name of the mansion that the overlooks Colts? the Colt factory? Oh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So and the answer was? The answer was Armsmere. Yes. And our winner was Philip Teresi. And uh, Philip will be contacting you shortly. And, and Philip got like the shirt and the mug and the hat thing. That's Is that it. I believe that's uh, that was that's what I heard on the episode. Yeah. Cool. So. All right. Congratulations, Philip. So, uh, so I'm back. Uh, I want to th- say thanks to Rick and Steve for taking over for the last uh, four weeks. I think it was. Um, I had some personal business to take care of. I was studying for a engineering exam and just took that a few days ago so and you passed mm, i hope so uh, we'll find you don't out know yet. we'll find okay. out in about two months okay but that was a major thing i've been studying for 10 months or so and wow. uh, <clears throat> actually when when i was approached to uh join the show that was one of the things i said you know i'd love to and Love what you guys do. I'm a fan of the show, mm-hmm. and I uh, would love to be a part of it. And but that's the one thing I gotta stay focused on. So now right. that's done, and I'm I'm back. So cool. I'm happy about that. We're glad to have you back. So um, thank you. So now, um, so we're gonna talk about tracking your match performance, and this comes from just myself being an engineer and wanting to you know keep track of everything and measure everything, mm-hmm. and so. This, I don't know, maybe this episode won't appeal to everyone, the broad spectrum of the audience, but stick with us and maybe, uh, maybe you'll learn something. So, um, so I started shooting USPSA in 2002, and I'd show up once a month and shoot, and I'd get the scores online from the, uh, you know, the, the club website and say, oh, there I am, you know, ha- you know, three quarters of the way down the list, you know, near the right. bottom. And, you know, eventually I was near the middle or whatever. But I kind of started, you know, it was, oh, man, it was like years, three, four years. And I finally said, you know, I'm trying to get better, but I don't really know what, what should I be working on? You okay. know, um, I just go and I shoot and I come home and I, I see the results on the, on the website and I go, what does it mean? And, and it's, it's, what does it tell me? It's not really telling me much. So, right. um, so we've prepared some, uh, well, I prepared a, uh, a spreadsheet many years ago um, to plug in the data from that website, which a long time ago was just the club website. Now USPSA has got all the stats <clears throat> for the matches up there. And they've really got, it's a really great resource. I mean, you can, you can, click on your name and it'll tell you what you've done for the match and uh, your rank on every stage and you even get emails nowadays that tell you hey the match results have been posted and right and you know here's your rank on every stage and here's your overall rank so that was that's a really neat thing but they didn't have that back when I started this and I guess just out of habit I still do it and it's just a way to uh, put you know put the numbers down and mm-hmm. so I can look at them overall and figure out what did I do what do I need to do in the future so we're gonna take a look at that so um, hmm. I guess we'll kick it off we're gonna start this with a video and so to make it more interesting we'll have a video of the stage we'll show the results from the USPSA website and then take those numbers from the USPSA website and plug them into the spreadsheet. So um, actually, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you the, and I'll, I'll show this to Rick here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is you know, uh, we'll, we'll put up on the screen 
an image of this right here. So this is the blank spreadsheet. Let me walk you through it, Rick. Uh, we've got I've got these boxes highlighted in red. That's something we're going to focus on here. But you know, you got basic information up and down the left column. You got mm -hmm. the location, the date. You know what what the event was. This was a club match in this case. Right. We've got the stage numbers. We've got columns for each stage. And I put in here my points, my penalties, and my time. Mm -hmm. And then automatically here in this purple row, it calculates my hit factor right. from that information. Sure. And then now who won the stage? The number one guy. Now, is that irrespective of division or the number one in your division? This is just in, in your division. Okay, so, so directly comparable. Right. Because right. so, Steve always used to create a, a, an, overall. an overall that right. it would, seems to me seem to take a lot of time and energy. We could maybe even talk about now there's a resource for that. You can okay. see overalls nowadays on the web. Unofficially, but um, anyway, so the guy in your division that's right there on the on the same page as you, right. whoever won that stage, I called him the number one guy. He's there's his points with good reason. Number one penalties, number one time, and the high hit factor for the stage. That's the second purple row. So that's his okay. um, that's his stuff. And then um, your stage percent is calculated, which is displayed on the website as well. Mm -hmm. And now these two, the green and the blue rows. I got points percent and time percent, and this is where you figure out what are you doing wrong. Okay. So, uh, That's and, and, and we'll we'll get into that when we get some numbers plugged in here. So, mm -hmm. um, and then the stage winner in the orange row, you could plug the guy's name in. Mm -hmm. um, overall finish, who won the match, mm -hmm. um, and then some more information here. What division was I shooting? I, in this example, I showed limited with a Glock twenty four, mm -hmm. and then these three yellow boxes. I pick off the. Um, I just pick them off the overall results for the match. Right. I was ranked fifth out of fifteen shooters or something, maybe right. you know. And my match percent was seventy-seven percent. I don't know, whatever. And we'll just plug those numbers in. That's just something. Those aren't calculated. That's just something that I can go back and look at and go, you know, just go through this. Go through the sheet before right. the next match and kind of go look through my recent past and see how I've been doing. What do I need to work on? Right. What do I need to focus on for this match coming up tomorrow or whatever? So, okay. And then I've got this big box I just called Lessons Learned where I can put, just free type anything. like, um, And you'll see that. We'll, we'll fill some stuff in. So I guess first, let's take a look at, uh, at stage one. Oh, and, and I guess I should say this is a match. Um, it's, it's up on my YouTube channel and... Um, some of some of the viewers have found me through Power Factor Show, so maybe you've already seen some of these guys. May have already seen the videos, but this was a match. It's like the last match where I got video for the whole thing, and so I got something as recent as I could. But this was April 2012. I was the match director actually for the match, and um, which there's my excuse, right? I was sure I was distracted right. being match director, right? Yeah, so that's, that's always the case. Uh, uh, and this was at Marysville Rifle Club, as it says here on the uh, spreadsheet. So we'll take you now to uh, the video for stage one. This is the classifier, obviously, and this is the first time I ever put my camera down range. So you get some. It's a, it's a nice training tool. Let's see what the hell you're doing wrong. So that's stage one. Okay. okay. So now we will cut back to. So now you can see. Um, now we'll show you the the results from that stage uh, from the USPSA website, which is shown here. You'll see that uh, I I was fourth place on that stage with uh, 56 points, 10 point seven seconds I can't read that that small what do we got here 10.79 seconds my hit factor is 5.19 the guy that won the stage is Mike uh, he's got 58 points 8.84 seconds and his hit factor is 5.56 so we'll show you now that goes in the spreadsheet right here mm -hmm. I've got highlighted in the in the red boxes so like I said before from the other page you can rewind the video if you need to look at it again the uh, my points, 56, zero penalties, 10.79 seconds. It calculates the hit factor. You can check that. That's, that's calculated properly. And then Mike, he's the number one guy. I put his points and his penalties and his time in there, put his name down at the bottom. And, uh, and then uh, normally I would move on. This, this actually, this, this match was the first time I ever put my camera 
downrange facing back up at me in it. Mm -hmm. What a great training tool. So I started here at the bottom. You'll see tips after watching the video. And this mm -hmm. is something I just started after this match. Um, Stage one on the classifier. Load gun with fewer rounds. It was lighter weight. I felt like, at least at the time, I felt like, why do I need to be throwing 20 rounds, the weight of 20 rounds, just to shoot six shots? Okay. Um, that's a tip to myself. Right. Um, I only needed six rounds per string. Why did I have to load it up with 20 rounds? Right? Sure. So I felt like maybe I could have gone faster if the gun was lighter. Okay. So there's a... Yeah. Uh, a training tip for myself that I that I learned from watching this video and from from shooting the match from shooting the stage. Now also now see, let's look at our our sheet here in the green row. Uh, if we show that again, you can see I've got ninety six and a half percent of the points that Mike shot, and he shot it. The way this works is he shot it in eighty one point nine percent of my time so right. his time was faster than mine mm -hmm. so i set the formulas up so that you want to see 100 percent on both of those if if you're if you won the stage it'll be exactly 100 percent because you'll have your points up top and your points down below the math's going to come out to 100 percent on the points 100 percent on the time now maybe maybe you were second place on the stage and you shot more points than than the, than the winner of the stage. Mm -hmm. You'll see 101, 102 oh, okay. percent in this is what's going to happen on this uh, formula. Okay. The, um, and the same goes for the time. If you were faster, but somebody else won the stage, the time percent is going to be over 100 percent. So what you want to see is 100 percent. That's your goal, to be 100 percent or better on, both, uh, on, on either one of those. Or you know, if you win the stage, you're 100 percent exactly. Mm. So anyway, that's, that's how that works. Um, we uh, we can move on to the video for stage two and uh, take a look at that real quick. Are you ready? Stand by. <clears throat> okay, so. That was a video for stage two. Now that was actually a stage I designed for the uh, for the match, and um, with a down with an empty gun start in the an holster. An empty gun start. The the fault line you couldn't quite see was kind of a V shape. You're standing outside. You step in, load the gun, and start shooting. Now right. um, we'll show the results for for this one, and you'll see uh, my name there at fourth place, and uh, Tom won the stage, and uh, you see the numbers there. We'll skip over to our spreadsheet. Now you can see here we've got the numbers plugged in, and you can go back and check it yourself. Uh, these are the numbers from there, and uh, we got Tom's name at the bottom. He's the stage winner. Something I forgot to point out actually in the beginning was my stage ranking. That's the number on top here. So I plugged in a four for stage one. I was fourth place on stage two. Okay. So uh, let's move on. And oh, actually, after watching the video, my little tip to myself: stage two, lean forward more. Uh, stand up, I'm standing up straight and the gun's pushing me back is what Ooh. I noticed on the video okay. um, and if you guys go back check out the video you'll see I'm standing up very straight and I'm not leaning into it as I should mm -hmm. um, and also I told myself rehearse the shooting positions a little bit more I, I went to move and I went oh wait no this I want to be back over here to shoot that one target and I, I didn't rehearse it well enough and that five minute walkthrough is pretty important and when you're a match director, sometimes you don't have time or don't take the time, and you're you're focused on other people and uh, other issues that come up. And you know, oh, it's your turn to shoot, and you just run up and shoot it. And you're like, oh, I designed right. a stage, I know what I'm doing, and, right. then, and then and then you flub it. So right. uh, in my case, that's what happened there. So uh, let's take a look at stage three. Is right here. Now this one, the downrange camera I, effect. I, wasn't I, as, uh, I I couldn't find a, a good place to put a camera downrange. I decided to put it where it would you know catch the end of the action there. Right. So uh, anyway, so then um, so we take that um, information from the website. We got stage three here. And I was second place on that stage. Ooh. And Who won that one? Uh, 
A guy named Yong. Oh, you Yong, ever heard of Yong? One, yeah. Okay, so so oh, Yong and, and, and by the way, I've duking and, it out. Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, I've, I've I've taken all the last names out of this to protect the innocents. So. Right. Or but, the guilty, uh, case maybe. Sure. So, so now here on my spreadsheet, you see I put I, I was second on the stage. Here's my points. Here's uh, Yong's points. I was 98 percent of the points, and he did it. In ninety two and a half percent, basically of, of my time. So I was so the so the, right the green there. one represents your number relative to them, yes. and the blue number is their performance relative to you. Basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in order to make it work out, so that the goal was to get them both at a hundred percent. Right. You don't want one to read zero and the other to read hundred. Right. So yeah. so I, I set this up assuming that I'm not winning these stages. Ooh, right. So. Yeah. I, Maybe that's a problem right there. <laughs> is there something in the notes about it's, that? It's mindset. Yeah. I got a bad mindset right off the get go. Right. So, and then um, and review of the video. I just said to myself here, you can see at the bottom, I wasted time pulling the rope at the end. I should have just shot the two static targets, targets, yanked the rope, and just be done with it, and not shoot the disappearing target. That in USPSA, if the target's not available forever, essentially, you don't have to shoot at it. Right. Uh, you still have to activate it. Right. But you don't have to shoot at it. There's, there are no penalty mics. So you calculated so, that the 10 points wasn't worth so it? So I've actually been through. I've, I looked at the video. I estimated. I said, what if, okay, so let's say I got 10 points. So delete 10 points. And let's cut um, a second and a half is what I estimated by watching the video. And I right. actually uh, came up like two and a half percentage points okay. um, by reviewing that video saying, here's what I should have done since I flubbed that rope. I should have just shot the two static targets casually yanked the rope and said, hey, I'm done, and not shot that last target in mm -hmm. this case. Mm -hmm. Now, the the did Young pull the rope and shoot everything, or did I you skip know. it? He you wasn't remember? on my squad, so oh, okay. you did. I don't okay. know. All right. You were in um, the super squad? Oh, no, 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 not the super squad. <laughs> okay, so here's stage four. Just a little bit of steel on that Got one. Got some steel plates and some tight leaning around the barricades there. I fall out of the shooting box. And my unload show clear trick. <laughs> Did you catch the round? Of course. Okay, good. I don't know any other way of doing it. <laughs> so, um, so now we go to, where are we at here? So stage four, um, I was fifth place on that one. You can see here from the USPSA website, uh, a guy named Vin won the stage. And I, here I go, I plug in my numbers, and here I can see a big discrepancy. Notice, after we get these numbers plugged in, notice, Rick, that I've got 96% of the points. So my points right. were good, you know, and you can see the points, 57 versus 59. Sure. But my time, mm. 76, 77%, uh, which tells you know, he did it a lot faster than I did, basically, and that just right. tells me that, uh, in this case, I really should have picked up the pace quite now, a bit. Looking at the video, could you see where you were wasting your time you know, or not? Um, <clears throat> I, I remember the stage. You couldn't see this on the video, but the, the plates you heard falling, they were there were four hinged plates that would fall back. And um, I hit one. It didn't go down. Or maybe I hit the stand, and I had to make that up. So I made up a shot. Um, at the very end, I shot three rounds. You'll see I shot three rounds in the last target. It was uh, uh, had some uh, hard cover. I felt mm -hmm. like I had to make it up. As I'm falling out of the box, sure. I ripped off another round. And that's not free. I mean, that takes time. So right. um, whether it's a quarter second or whatever it is, that, right. that adds to your time for sure. So, you know, eight and a half seconds versus 11. There's some time I could have found on that stage for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't have any comments on the video uh, in this case. So we'll go on to stage five. This is inside the uh, house at Marysville. We got some comments on this one for sure. Another empty bench start. Oh no, just hitting the That was start. a table start. Yeah. Ammo starts on the table. Oh, nice reload. Those windows are tall. <laughs> I'm on my tiptoes. <laughs> so, a um, couple of comments about this one. First, we can look at the results um, as we have been. Here's stage five. Um, looks like I'm all the way down at seventh place Whoa, on this one. Oh, my gosh. And uh, that, that, that Yong guy, he's back on top. 
So we'll, we'll put our numbers here in the spreadsheet. Here I am, seventh place, my points, his points, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And again, it's kind of like the last stage. I got the points. Right. Lots of points. Got a lot of points, 98% of the points, but the winner did it in three quarters of the time I did, 75% of the time I did. So right. my comment here, I've got a couple of comments uh, you can see at the bottom of the web, uh, the spreadsheet there based on the video. Uh, if you go back and watch the video, the, the gun was loaded on the table and the mags start on the table and you could put the mags there's like two different tables you could put your mags anywhere you wanted them and i took like three seconds to jam the mag in my mag pouch because i didn't i didn't want to just you know loosely shove it in there i want to make sure it's really in there because i don't want to get all the way down range and have it fall out somewhere sure. yeah so what i learned on that was my mag pouches were too tight i loosened the screw a little bit it took a lot of effort to get it seated mm-hmm. in there the way i wanted it so i said hey look at that I got an equipment problem here that I can fix watching this video. Right. And since then, I've loosened it up, and it, and it goes in a lot easier, and, it, and it's not going to fall out on me, I, I right. found. Um, the other thing is, you know, I tell myself, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm still working on my reloads, apparently. I grabbed the magazine <laughs> like this by the base, oh, yeah. and I stuffed it in the gun like that instead of with the index finger up along the front edge, and, and right. that was just sloppy. Mm-hmm. I don't know, and, and I need to, um, since this video, I've been working on that again okay. uh, make sure I've got the right technique and not be sloppy about those sorts of things because you can't, it's hard to control the angle of your magazine when you've just got a hold of the base Right. Uh, you know, you could easily miss a reload that way so mm-hmm. those are a couple things I picked up off of that video um, the next one here stage 6 are you ready? No, pretty good. That was pretty smooth. So that looked pretty smooth, right? So let's see what the numbers tell us. Uh, go up here to stage six. Larry Leone, eighth place. Oh. Yong, number one. Yeah, well. So let's see what happened here. We plug our numbers in. I got my eighth place. Still 75%. Uh, 75% of the speed. Oh, but the hits. But were the, look at the sucky. hits. So look at the hits. Do? 80%. 80%. Sloppy. Look at look at we got here. I've got. Uh, I don't remember if it was a miss or a no shoot. I could drill down in the USPSA website to figure right. out what it was, but right. I got only 105 points compared to Yong's 118. Mm-hmm. But then I got a negative 10 on top of that, so right. my points suffered big time. It looks mm-hmm. smooth. It looks right. good on video, right? Well, that's, that's the nice thing about having the camera down range. You can't tell if you're getting any good hits or not. Uh, <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, you know. that's true. Looks good I mean, on YouTube, even if you miss everything. That's. The most important thing, really, is if it looks good on camera, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. come on, that's what it's really all about. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, stage six, I added a stage six comment with the stage five. I just said, and six. I also need to work on my reloads. I did the same thing on that stage that we talked about yeah. last time. So, uh, finishing up here with stage seven. I didn't have a good downrange place to put the camera, so we just put, okay. our, put it uprange of, of myself. Now, right here, I forgot to reload before getting to the corner, so I had a little bit of a static reload there. And then at the end there, I had a few makeup shots on the steel, so. Yeah. Anyway, so we go to, uh, we've got, uh uh-oh, we got stage seven here. So I think we've got, there's stage seven, and there I am at second place. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was one of my stage designs as well. Second. Oh, no coincidence you were second place then. You knew you where know, the sweet spot was. That, and, yeah. that, that, that can help a little bit. Right. So it's not cheating. It's just, you know, somebody's, sure. somebody's got to put the match on, right? Right. Somebody's got to put the match on. And that usually target. that guy shoots the match. So, yeah. <laughs> so there's my numbers. Uh, second place, 96 points compared to Yong's 99. Um, 96% of the points. And a little slow... Um, but you know, compared to a grandmaster, well, yeah, I mean, you're going to get, uh, you know, 81% uh, or, so, know, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, depending on who wins, your percentages are going to go up and down, re- not regardless of your sure. own performance, but even if your performance was exactly the same on every stage, that percentage is going to go up and down depending on who won, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's all about. At least you get beat by the best guy. It's all about uh, stage by stage racking up 
stage points, which right. add up into your match percentage. Yeah. So now we've got our final, the spreadsheet's complete. Um, I, I filled in the yellow boxes at the bottom here under my mm -hmm. under my limited Glock 24. I was third overall for the stage, uh, for the match, I mean, sorry, um, uh, out of 20 people, and with a, with a finish of 81.42. Not too shabby. I'm shooting against a couple of GMs. I'm, uh, I'm technically a B class. <laughs> I've, mm -hmm. I made A class and limited ten, and all my all my classifications are now sitting at a, at a seventy percent essentially. So um, you well, know, it's interesting that you're if you look at your average finish, you only were you only were better than third on two stages, but yep. below third on five stages. So there must have been some wild swings amongst the other competitors. Well, it could be that. Uh, that that's part of it. You know, if you could be third place all day long and win the match, right. because it's a, a different guy every time that, if that, it's a that, different guy that every wins time. the stages. Yes. And the other thing is the weight of the stage. I mean, it's all yep. about points. So uh, the big stages way in yeah. heavier when it comes right. to the final results. Better to finish second on the 151 point stage than second on the 96 point stage. There you stage. go. That's right. So, and then I and then on my lessons learned, this is the final piece of the sp spreadsheet I put in there. You can read that, but basically that's where I that's where I go through there and just look at my overalls and go, where where was I on points? Where was I on time? What do I need to work on next time? Is am I getting sloppy? And if like I you know like I did on stage six here, I'd call that sloppy. But otherwise, 96, 98, 100, mm -hmm. um, pretty good on accuracy. So yeah. I'm not working on accuracy right now. Yeah, I mean you're well over 90 percent on all of them except that one. Except for that one yeah. stage, which I can't explain what happened. It's just everyone else did just that much better. I guess right. it looks smooth to me. I didn't see any major mistakes. I think just right. everyone else had a good day on that stage, and you know. Now, that's what it is. Do you so. remember what order did you shoot these stages in? Uh, we started on, I do remember, we started on the house stage, which was inside what we call the house at Marysville, which no longer exists. Um, it was in bad shape, and we recently tore it down. But that that's the... But which stage was it, though? Oh, well, five. Five, okay. Sorry. So okay. so, so your, your best stage was... Um, yeah, kind of in the middle. Kind of in the middle, but your, the, what we'll call your worst stage... Was Fairly the, early in the day. The now, did the, the weather day. change throughout the day? Was it colder in the morning? I mean, do you have any correlation between the range conditions or? I don't. I don't. I really don't recall the weather. I mean, you could see it on the video. I think it was all fairly sunny. Uh, yeah. This was this was in April. I think we had a pretty nice day. It's normally rains in Seattle till about July fourth. I notice one of the things that I do just using the USPSA website information is I will often see that I've got. I get kind of hot at some point during the match. I'll shoot like three <laughs> yeah. or four good stages in a row. Mm -hmm. And then let's say the first stage of the day, I'm cold, literally or figuratively. Sure. I haven't shot a gun in a week. Sure. And then at the end of the day, I wish I were home because it's raining. And, then, you know, and so it, it's so like you can see, actually... Kind of a, yeah, a, exactly. a, a peak in the middle of the day. Exactly, and then, exactly. Then you start dragging at the end of the day. Yeah. Especially and, like those Puyallup matches that go eight hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting. You know, I mean, I see that in so. probably most of the matches I shoot, that, that there'll be like three stages in a row where I do really well and then the others um, you know either it's because uh, again cold in the sense that I haven't I haven't warmed up yet or cold in the sense that I've been on the range for six hours right. and I'm literally cold right but it's kind of that's one of the things that I do pay attention to because I think it has a lot to do with over the course of the day like Steve and I banged on that heavily about the match in, uh, that we shot in Texas. Right. Where in the morning, so hot down it's there, 80 right? degrees. And then by the and afternoon... you're doing fine, probably. Yeah, but in the afternoon, it's 101 degrees. <laughs> and we're you not know. used to that. Yeah, and so it's one of those things that I <laughs> so, that I you know do keep track of just because mm -hmm. I, I think it does affect your that's, performance when you shoot the stage. That's interesting. You know, you could uh, make make such comments on your... Yeah, well, you might want to highlight. Let me just highlight it. on here which stage you started on and yep. see if there's any correlation between your performance during the day yep. in the morning versus late in the afternoon. Not a bad idea. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of things you guys can do uh, to modify this, use it as is, um, as you see fit. So what we're going to do, actually, we're going to put this, we've got a template of this, we're going to put on the uh, powerfactorshow.com. Oh, cool. You guys can download it. I've set up, um, I've set up um, some templates in there with five stages, six stages, seven, nine, twelve, twenty-four, so that if you're a little less savvy on, on Microsoft Excel, I've kind of got it set up for you. Um, this is not, we're not going to teach you how to run a spreadsheet. You guys can figure that out on your own. Hopefully you know how, and if not, um, 
you know, maybe it's not a tool you can use, but uh, hopefully, hopefully there's some guys. I know we've got at least one engineer out there. We've heard from him. Well, it's just so. punching the numbers in, right? <laughs> and it's basically it just itself. it's basically plugging in the numbers. Yeah. Got to be careful not to break any formulas by accidentally hitting delete and whatever else. But then you need to take that and highlight it and copy it down the page for the next match and so on. And mm-hmm. and that's what I do every time I shoot a match. I go to the previous one especially one that already matches that width for that number of stages. And I copy it, I bring it down, I clear out all the white space there and plug in the numbers. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, one thing we didn't show was the overall results, and they're right here, right there. So that's where my my 81% comes from, my third place out of 20. um, Can you use enlarge that so even... Those of us that are... It'll, it'll be large enough on the, well, uh, I know, on the but video, I want, but, but I don't want to see it. But here's... I want to see who just shot. Just for you. Putting in, Chris. Oh, Lisa was there. Yeah, Lisa uh, was shooting. James and, Scott, Kevin Thomas Gear. And so you'll see there's 21 entries, but this guy was a re-entry. Like, he reshot the classifier or something like that. So uh-huh. I just... I, so I put third place out of 20, so huh. that's, which is what it was, so... All right. Well, 20 shooters uh, in limited. Yeah. And that's this... Good oh, and... Also, I want to say, <laughs> just because it's fun, um, the match name. Notice the match name was Shoot Tax Free oh. because this was April 15th, tax right. day, right? right. And, um, and you'll notice all the stage names. We had some fun stage names like uh, you know, Home Foreclosure and I don't know, whatever. Oh, that's and it's, fun, Home it, Foreclosure. <laughs> I like that. And it's just it's, no, it's, it's 2012 theme. I just want to say that it's, it's, it's fun to, uh, it, it, it ups the production value to name the stages and have a theme and kind of, sure. even for a regular club match, um, it, just, it just ups the production value and it, and it ups the interest in your matches. I mean, instead of just going, you know, stage one, stage two. Whatever. Right. So zombie. That's attack. what we do. So there's there's a couple more spreadsheets we're gonna put on the website. We don't have to go through them. Um, we could show them real quick. There's I've I've got a um, like a round count tracking uh, spreadsheet we'll put up there for you. And that's like I've got one for every gun. And I keep track of the mileage on my guns. Oh, okay. So okay. what I do is I take three hundred rounds to the match, exactly three hundred in the ammo boxes, and then I come home and I count what I got left. And I plug it in. Okay, today I shot 179 rounds, mm-hmm. Glock 24. This was the ammo. And I got a comments bar where it says whatever it wants to say. If there was a chrono there, what did I chrono at? Right. Who did I shoot with? How was the weather? How was I feeling? It's just the another way of rod kind broke. of tracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. If, yeah. if something broke, you had a malfunction, that's a good place to keep track of your malfunctions and hmm. all that kind of stuff. Now, do you, what, what, what do you do with the information? It's... Um, it's just it's just a just to keep track of mileage basically. Okay, the main, but do you the use main, it for maintenance or do it's it's a, it's a it's a malfunction tracking thing like mm-hmm. you know my magazine number one keeps screwing up on me and it's just right. a way so I don't have to remember that I can go back right. and go oh well here's all the data right here I don't have to okay. rely on my memory but also it comes when it comes down to selling a gun people want to know this gun uh, has forty two thousand one hundred and twelve rounds? rounds through it and how many. Yeah. I'll just ask you, how many guns does the gun have for sale, Rick? It's always 5,000, <laughs> right? Yeah. I always see guns for sale. Oh, it's got 5,000 rounds. Every one of them has got 5,000 rounds. Yeah. Well, I know mine exactly, as, as pretty close to the exact as I can. Right. If, if I rack a round out and I don't catch it and I miss it. you make a or, note of that if you don't no, catch it? No, I don't. No, okay. It's, it's right. not that. Uh, well, just, it's, it's not down to that. Okay. So, All right. Um, if, if the round I just thought be- that's something you need to work on if you, if you drop it. <laughs> Two or three times no, in the no, same no, no. month. That's, you know? not, that's off the clock. Okay, all right. But okay. Uh, in terms of round count, if I do drop one or lose one or give my buddy ten rounds, hey, try this ammo in your gun. Maybe right. you'll like it. Um, I just count that as being shot through my gun. If it doesn't make it home, I just count it as being shot. Hmm. Now, the, the, the third spreadsheet um, that I've got is similar. It's for my uh, reloading press, and it's how many rounds have I loaded on the press. Okay. And I keep track of that, too. So it's uh, what the date was, how many rounds I loaded, what was the bullet, what was the primer, what was hmm. the powder charge, and any comments about about that. So that's um, that's free for the viewers if you guys if you guys like it great if not that's fine you know it's just uh, something I like to do so hmm. yeah well it's very so, technical I mean and like- it's and it's something that you know when you're on a budget and you're and you are you shoot once a month maybe twice a month and 
and you don't have any time for training, you're not a member of a range, you don't go to a, a training class for $500 for a three-day whatever from a master or grandmaster guy, whatever. If you don't have any other ways of training, if you're like me, this is my, this is kind of my, the way I improve, which hmm. is slower. I'll say it's it's a lot slower than just shooting every weekend, right? <laughs> well, but, if, but you can but you can if, shoot yeah. you could waste ammo while you're shooting it. This is true. So this, this is true. There's, it's hard to. I don't think you're probably wasting much time well, by analyzing true. this, and it's not and costing it's, you anything. And for me, it's fun. You know, I, I like to get home. I like to see the results, and I like to plug it in and just see what the numbers are telling me. So hmm. cool. I like it. So yeah, yeah hopefully cool. you guys like it too. So, uh, do we have a trivia? Well, do you have any other questions? I mean, uh, is that no? I mean, it's interesting. It's interesting. The, the, this, there's been a number of episodes where Steve has gone on uh, about how <laughs> you know he loads his load data, chrono data, into his phone, and he does this and that, and the same yep. thing here about your yep. you know punching in numbers and keeping track of yep. on a spreadsheet. It's, and uh, I, to a certain extent, I keep track of this stuff. But I'll do it, for instance, like if I want to know how many rounds I've shot through my gun, I'll think, well, let's see. 2010, I shot single stack, typical match, is about 150. I shot eight matches, 150 times 50. I know exactly how many rounds I shot within, within 100 reason. rounds or whatever. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, and so, you know, I tend to, if, there, if there's a piece of information I want, I, I, I save my match results, the USPSA uh, match results that show both the overall and how I did within my class. Mm-hmm. And I can get a lot of this information off of that, off of that information yeah. uh, that just comes off the website. Right. And I used to sit, print that out and save it for every match that mm-hmm. I shot, which both let me, you know, see how thick of a binder I could build of match results. But I could go from, uh, you know, look and say like, where was I finishing um, the summer of 2008 compared to the summer of 2010? Yeah. You know, was I shooting a different gun? Was I in a different class now? You know, different right. division. And so I do keep track of statistics and, and use them, I think, in a similar way to the way you do it. But I just dispense with the spreadsheet. And that's just, you know, because I'm not a spreadsheet guy. It's funny. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned about you do it in Excel. And if you're not very good at Excel, I've ta- we've got a number of uh, classes that I can take at, at my work. And I've taken the intro to Excel class at least twice and maybe three times. But I, I don't use Excel at work. Okay. So, so within a month or two, yeah. I've forgotten it all. And that's why I keep it, taking the class. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. But I do occasionally get a chance to use it. And I think a little bit of familiarity <clears> with it, you know, it's not, it's fairly intuitive. I mean, I, you know, uh, but it's, if you like to track it at this level of detail, uh, that's yeah. pretty cool. I like it. And, you know, maybe it's just an engineering thing. I know we've got some engineers out there and some other technical folks. And, yeah, I uh, think there's hippies out there too, though. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. So. All right, so do we have a trivia question this week? <sighs> Let's see. IDPA or USPSA? Well, we're going to do IDPA this okay. time. And uh, I'm just going to have to, I, I want to wing it because I, when I winged a question, it just turned to tears because I didn't remember where USPSA headquarters was. <laughs> that was the Burlington question. Yeah, and it was right. like, that's a trick question. You know, I moved to Burlington. I'm like, well, that's not the question, though. Okay, so All we're right. going to do an IDPA question. And let me just come up with one real quick here. Um, if you have a course of fire, and the written procedure says, uh, let's say there's six targets, and uh, the best two hits on each target is scored. Okay. And the procedure says, engage targets T1 through T6 with at least two rounds each. Uh, so that would be a total of 12 rounds minimum. And uh, let's say you fired uh, your 11 rounds and, fa- and then decided, hmm, I'm not going to fire that 12th round. Ooh. I, you know, I, I look at how much, how long it takes me to reload. Uh, you know, the time penalty for a, a miss on the target. Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna, not gonna take that 12th shot. Am I going to get a procedural penalty? Am I going to get more than one procedural penalty? And what are they? So that's the question. So let's, let's. You fired 11 rounds on a course of fire that requires a minimum of 12. Each target requires engagement with at least two rounds each, and when you get to your eleventh round, you stop. All four, tar- all six targets are paper targets. You've stopped. Decided, I'm not going to reload to not take that waste 12, the time. But I'm not going to waste the time to take to that reload. 12, 12 shot. Okay. So, what, if any, are the penalties? And uh, let's hear those answers. So send your answers in. The best way is to uh, powerfactorshow at gmail.com. Or go to the website, powerfactorshow.com. <laughs> I guess what about that, Facebook? I guess that leaves facebook.com slash powerfactorshow for me. So 
There you go. Well, so I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We tried to jazz it up a little bit by throwing some shooting videos in there. Oh, not it was just, jazzy. It was jazzy. Not just talking about spreadsheets. Right. We actually, yeah, we actually shoot guns. Yeah, there was a little shooting in there. And uh, thanks a lot. We'll see you next week.